Hi, this is Doug with Inspire Light Shows, and in this video, we're going to talk about our arch based designs for PEX tubing and show you how to build an arch like this one. Now, our PEX arch based designs come in two different styles. You have an ultimate version and a standard version. What I have in front of me here is an ultimate version, and the only difference between the ultimate version and the standard version is this horizontal span right here. On the ultimate version, this is made from PEX tubing, the same tubing that makes up the arch, allowing you to put your pixel strips not only in the arch, but along this horizontal span here, giving you a really cool look. On the standard arch, instead of doing PEX tubing, you can use either half inch PVC or half inch EMD. These standard bases come with this bushing that allows you to change the size of the opening. So right now, it is designed for half inch PVC to make up that span, but simply by installing this bushing in here, you can take EMT and now that fits securely and can get screwed in place to make up your horizontal bracing. So regardless of what your preference is, you can use the same base for both versions. Regardless of whether you're using the ultimate design or the standard design, the horizontal legs that you can see here on both sides are made from half inch PVC. I'm using a length of 12 inches, so one foot for the horizontal leg, and that just simply goes in the arch like this. There's a screw that you can use to secure this in place. Honestly, I don't even use the screw in here. Just using a landscape staple similar to this one on either end and both sides of the arches is plenty to hold this thing in place. But the screw's there just in case you want it. The other thing I'll mention is you may notice on the table that this rocks back and forth and that's simply just because the PVC sits above the bottom of the arch base. And the reason is this is made to be sitting on the ground, on your lawn, and the subtle differences here in height will get evened out the second you put this on the grass and put these staples in, it'll be really solid. And the reason we have PVC here for the legs as opposed to putting the staple or a nail or some sort of spike through the base like a lot of our competitors is because that really takes the stress off the base, whether it's in wind or more likely kids. Kids love to run up to arches and grab them and rock them back and forth and sometimes even jump through them and their feet will kick the arches. And when you have a system like this with PVC that adds a little bit of extra flexibility into the base, that's gonna allow this to rock back and forth a bit not cause damage and not transfer as much energy into the base. If you just had a spike or a nail in it and some kid starts grabbing this and rocking it back and forth, you're likely going to crack your base. So I'm speaking from experience. I've had it happen. And so I know that having a system like this with PVC in the legs is really the best way to take stress off the bases when the arches get moved around. So with that said, we'll talk about the differences here in the kits when you purchase them. The ultimate arch base will come with two arch bases and there is a right and left side and that's simply because there's a exit slot for a pigtail. The pigtails are designed, in this case they're on the back side, so you're viewing the front of the arch and your pigtails will be more towards your house and the back side. They'll also come with four of our revolutionary pixel strip holders, and this is a really cool design. If you want to check it out, there'll be another video that does show more detail on how this thing works, but it's a really cool design to hold the pixel strips in place, and those work in combination with these end caps that the small bungees actually snap into, as well as eight screws. We'll have four 832 by half inch length screws and four 832 by 3 8 inch screws. Moving on to the standard version, you have your two sets of arch bases as well, your two bushings to allow you to use either PVC or EMT for the horizontal legs, the two strip holders for the main portion of the arch, two of the end caps, and eight screws as well. This time they're all half inch length 832 screws. Now as far as the pixel strips you use, the ones I like to use have 60 LEDs per meter. So 60 LEDs per meter, and these are sized for the two and a half meter span that you can now get for the arch. So back in the day, you had to make your own strips and cut your own ends and solder and weatherproof, and it was a real pain. But it's very nice now that a lot of the vendors sell strips in smaller length with your connectors on. So 
This design here is made for the two and a half meter strip. But when you're doing an ultimate version and you're putting pixel strips here, obviously this span is shorter. So if you're doing an ultimate version, you will have to cut and shorten one of the ends of your strips. But compared to years ago, that's really a breeze and there'll be another video and you can click the link on that to see how to make um, your strips a little bit shorter. But these strips we're using here are, as I said, 60 LEDs per meter. The ones I like are each LED is its own pixel as opposed to three LEDs being one pixel. So these have really high resolution and these are fully encapsulated in like a silicone or epoxy here. They're very flexible and um, very durable. So I really like these strips here for doing it. This one happens to be the one for the base. I've already shortened this to length and just to differentiate which end is uh, for the base and which end is for the arch itself. I've taken some liquid electrical tape and just painted a little bit of red on the ends here so I know that this one is going to be for the horizontal base and then the one uh, straight out of the bag will go right in here for the arch. As far as assembly and tools we're going to need, the first thing you're going to want a large work area, something like this to give you plenty of room to work on. Also desirable if you have an end here that you can clamp to because you will be using some clamps. So we have two clamps as well as some needle nose pliers, wire cutters, you need a drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit. You'll need an 832 tap to tap the threads for your 832 screws, as well as a bit for your screwdriver. And optionally, there are some other things that you could use. Um, I like using a heat gun for a step, but you don't necessarily have to use that. Having a Dremel tool with a drum sander attachment will come in handy, but you could easily use an X-Acto knife or a small file for that step. And the other thing you may need is an air compressor. So I like blowing out the little debris that will accumulate in the tube with an air compressor. So if you have an air compressor, you can uh, blow that out. So with all those steps talked about, We'll go ahead and clear off this table and we'll get started building our arches. To get started, the first thing I want to talk about is the PEX tubing itself. When you go to the home center, you'll typically find two types of PEX tubing, PEX A and PEX B. PEX B tubing is typically cheaper and that's the one we want to work with. I find that PEX B tubing transmits light a little bit better. The whites are a little more whiter when in PEX A tubing, it can be a little more yellow. The other thing with PEX tubing that you need to be mindful of is whether you get it in a stick or a spool. I honestly prefer sticks like these. Sticks will be have some sort of bend to them, but they're going to be straighter. But if you get a spool and you think, okay, if you're going to do a bunch of arches, it's better to get it in a spool, they're really going to be very coiled, and that's going to make the horizontal spans extremely difficult to make because it's not going to want to stay straight. And on the arch itself, you may find that it's going to be um, wanting to curl a lot and that may cause problems as well. So I do recommend you use sticks of tubing, try and find the straightest ones as possible and make certain that you're getting PEX B tubing. Even if you get PEX B, I want to caution you, not every strip is made the same. And I've unfortunately come across this just recently in redoing some of the arches that I had in my display from before. And I got a bunch of PEX B tubing and I built the arch and I looked at one of the spans and it looked like yellow, almost brown for the white color. The red, green, and blue was pretty good, but the white was atrocious color. And I looked at it and side by side, if you were looking at them, they looked almost the same, but you could tell one was a little bit different color. But the second you put the strip on it in white, you could tell they were totally different. So I might caution you that if you're going to build a bunch of arches, when you get your tubes, before you start working on them, maybe put a strip in there, put it on white, and make certain that they're all the same. Kind of do a test of all your strips before you start working on them. Because if one happens to have a little bit different color to it, you'll may want to return that one and get something else. So it's something I just recently discovered with PEX tubing and I hadn't seen it before. And uh, maybe it's just a little bit different batch. And for tubing, I'm sure it was fine, but for arches that didn't work. The other thing I want to mention is how to remove the lettering that's on the tubing. If you take a rag or shop towel and use some sort of solvent like lacquer thinner, you can just put that on the rag, run it back and forth, and the lettering comes off really quickly, giving you a nice clean white tube for your strips. Speaking of strips, 
we need to figure out the length that we need to cut these tubes for, and I've already cut these to length. Now, ideally, if we're gonna work backwards here, this, when the strips go inside the tube and we have our strip holders here, we want the end of the strip to be about a quarter inch from the end of the tubing. And that means our strip holder will be just inside here and this end cap goes right here on the end of the tubing. The bungee hooks onto this and so there's a little gap here. Now I do have a um, kind of flat spot here on the bottom of the strip holder. So the strip can fit and will fit if it's sticking out a little bit from the end. But to get the best fit, we want that strip to terminate about a quarter inch before the end of the strip. So figuring all that out, and when you're gonna have your strip and it's gonna be bent inside the tube, for our arches here, and these are a 10 degree span on the arch, or 10 degrees from vertical is the way the ones I'm building here are, with that, I'm using 101 and three quarter inches for our main length of tubing. For this horizontal span, like I said, we're gonna have to cut the strip and I've already cut this to length, but the horizontal span I'm using is 63 and one quarter inches. And 63 and one quarter inches works perfectly in giving about a quarter inch gap to the end of the strip. Now, if you're using, say, a zero degree arch base, so where the tubing comes straight out, that means the tubing is going to be more bent, more compressed. And so you may need a little bit longer length, maybe a half inch longer length or so, to be able to have the strip end right where you want. So that's something where you're going to want to play with first before you start building all your arches. So start long, maybe start with an inch longer. So maybe go um, 102 and three quarter inches or something on your span and do a test fit, see where the strip ends and you know work a quarter inch at a time till you get the right length. And then once you get the right length, then you can cut all your pieces to the proper length like we have here to get started. So the first thing I wanna do for building the arch is actually assemble all the pieces without the strips. So I'll assemble the arches with the arch span and the horizontal span here without any of the pixels in it and we'll drill all of our holes and disassemble everything. So the first thing I'll do is move this guy out of the way and I'll start with the base here. As I said, we have these end caps. So this one's already in. There's a um, side that clearly goes inside here that's made to fit inside. It just snaps in. And all we're doing right now, I don't care about the position of them, is I just want to use that as a spacer because that's going to go in here. And if you notice, this tubing has a little bit of a crown to it. This crown you want to face up because the natural um, sagging of the arch over time will want to make this sag. So you want this crown of the arch to face upward. Just push that in all the way. Do the same on this side. Got this end cap in there. Push it all the way in. This one's a little tight. There it goes. Now I'm going to take my clamp, just clamp that end down, work it over here, and now I can straighten this, just rotate the base. So that one's nice and flat, so they're both flat. And I'll clamp this one down. And now you can rotate this as needed if you need to do any fine tune adjustment. I like where that's at now. The next thing will be to take the end caps and put them on the end of the main span. Again, I don't care about the exact orientation of them yet. And this one, put in, get an arch bang in the ceiling here. That's okay. Push that all the way down. Take my other end cap. Push it in here. And now you'll notice because this is clamped down, when I start bending this, I'm not putting stress on the base because if this wasn't clamped and you're trying to pull this in, all the stress of this 
piece of tubing trying to resist being bent is going to go on the base itself and you don't want that and that's a way to really break your bases especially if you're using the bigger HDPE tubing. On the PEX tubing it's not quite not nearly as rigid as uh, HDPE but still we want this clamped and that will take the stress off the base allow us to put this in still have to kind of work this over to our angle and push it all the way down. Now that that's all good, everything is in place, we're going to pre-drill holes for our screws. So we'll use an eighth inch drill bit in our drill here and we'll drill through. And you might be tempted to try and drill all the way through, but just drill from each side. That way you don't miss and come out the side of the arch base. Those are all drilled. I'm going to switch this out to our 832 tap and then we'll thread these holes for an 832 screw. holes are all drilled, they're tapped, they're ready for the screws. I will set this aside for a second and before I disassemble everything I do want to make a small mark on here to reference kind of the top. And so I'll use a sharpie for this, you could use a pencil. Either way when it's done you can just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol or the lacquer thinner and it will come right off. And I just want to mark the top just so I have a reference. I'll do both sides on the main arch section. And I recommend on one of the sides, so I'll do it on this side here. I'm just gonna put a second little dot on the side just so I know that this is the side that's on my right as opposed to the left side. Once you start working on this, um, you can't tell which side was which. So just put in a little extra reference mark is a handy trick. That is all done. Now I'll disassemble the arch. Just work it back and forth. Come out. End cap came off. If they come off, just uh, set them aside. We actually do need to take them off. I think this one is inside there. Set that aside. Pull this guy off. Those are done. Now we need to clean off the inside here. When we drilled, the outside is pretty clean, but the inside has some flared out material. We want to clean this off. Now you could use an X-Acto knife or a file, but I find the best tool for doing this is going to be a Dremel with a drum sander. So if you have one of those, highly recommend using it. You don't have to go too far, we're just going right to the screw so none of this stuff is going to scratch and uh, be visible to um, the arch itself because it's all covered by the base.
All right, that one's done. And what I like to do is blow out the debris with an air compressor. So if you take your hose, blow out both sides, and now it's free of any debris and nice and clean. The reason we were filing those down is because our pixel strips um, holders need to go inside and they need to move freely, freely in here so we can't have any debris blocking them. So now I will repeat that same process with the other section of PEX. Those are all done. Now the next step is gonna be assembling the pixel strips, starting with the horizontal span. I'll take the main section of the arch, I'll just set that aside. And we'll take our pixel strip that we've shortened earlier to length. And we identify by the arrows which way it's going. So in this case, that's the start of the strip. This is the end of the strip and the bases this one is the left side, so this would be viewed left side from the front. And the pigtails are exiting towards me. So what I'll do here is I'll take our pec strip. I see that this is the one I have the mark on that goes on this side. I'm just going to set this here. Just hold it down, make it fishing this through a little bit easier. and just fish the strip through the tubing. Now the other side. Now what we'll do is take one of our pixel strip holders here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to come and separate this. So just hold the outer piece and pull the inner barrel out and this has our bungee already attached into it. You'll notice there are two sides. We have one side here that's smaller and one side that has this flat piece that sticks out. That is the inside of the strip. This barrel connector from the outer barrel, that one, there's no right or left. It uh, works both ways. It just has this groove in the top and that allows you to put your strip inside. If we look at it from the top down here, you can see that there is a tray here that allows this bottom portion here to go inside and this presses down on the pixel strip, holding it in place. There's a little chamfer in there that holds this in place. And on the top, there is a double dovetail and that double dovetail serves as a track that holds this in place. And the function of that is it keeps the diameter of this barrel from expanding when you're pushing down on the strip. If it didn't have that, it would wanna expand and then it would not slide easily inside the strip. So the double dovetail holds everything in place so it slides evenly inside the strip. So for assembly here, just gonna move this so we get a little bit better view on the camera. I want this strip sticking out here just a few inches. I'm going to slide this over the connector, rotate it, and put my finger in it and kind of expand this. And as I'm doing that, on the end of my finger, I'm pushing that strip down so it sits all the way down at the bottom in its little channel. Then the interior portion goes with this little half moon shape on the inside of the strip and just sit it here, sit it on top and it should just slide in. You'll hear it kind of clicking as it goes in place until it's in and that will friction hold everything in place. If you do find that your strip is a little loose here and this moves back and forth, maybe you're using a strip that 
isn't, this one is solid, it's filled solid with silicone, so it's a little bit more rigid and bigger in diameter. If yours is a little thinner strip, you could put a piece of electrical tape or two in there on top of it just to add a little bit of thickness. But you don't need it to be 100% not moving, but it should be pretty stiff in there, which this one is. With that, I can go to the other end and just pull it. I don't want to pull on the wire and put any force on it. Just get that barrel started in there. Move this over and I'm going to repeat the process on this side here. So I'll now pull a few inches of strip out, separate the barrel from the in portion, slide it in, use my finger to widen the outer barrel, get the strip in place, and then slide the inner barrel in place. Now I'll gently pull this back over, get the barrel so it slides in. Now on this side, you'll see We have our strip is right by the end. It's right now it's sticking out about a half inch and I will take this connector here, which is the end cap. I'm just gonna pull a little bit on the bungee, slide it through the cap and then push it in place. And I'm gonna try and push the strip inside so I don't have any strip hanging out here. It doesn't have to be perfect right now because we'll readjust it once we get to the other side. And now on the other side, I'll do the same thing. We'll take our end cap and this time we'll need the needle nose pliers. Pull a little bit to get the slack out and then with the needle nose, I just want to grab that end piece of copper there I don't want to squeeze hard and deform it, but I just want to pull it out so I'm not pulling on the strip. And then I'll insert the end cap over it, release, and push it in place. So with that, both ends are on. The strip will get this one pushed all the way in here. Push that in. You can take your little mark here that you use for reference and line up the little groove that's on the top that the bungee slid in directly on that. It's not critical, but that kind of makes certain that it's matched up all the way. And then this piece of brass will be kind of just sticking out here. And on this horizontal span, you want it to be angled somewhat down. If it's straight or angled up when it slides in the base, it may not go in all the way, but if this is angled down, it'll go into a recess that's here in the base and we'll make plenty of room for it. So with that, I can take this end here, just push the pigtail in. We'll slide the whole thing all the way in place. You can rotate to get that mark that you made right on top there. And I'll repeat on the other side. Now they're both in all the way. I'll just temporarily put the pigtail through the channel there so it sits flat on the base. Clamp this end down. Grabbing clamps from either end. Yeah, we'll get this one so it kind of sits flat. Tuck this in. That's good. And now we can screw them in place with the shorter screws. These are the 3 8 inch length screws. Don't go.
go too tight, you don't want to over tighten these and strip out the threads because you're just threading into a little bit of plastic in the tubing. All right, that's all done. This lower horizontal span is complete. The strip's in place, it's all screwed in. And now we'll do a very similar technique on the main section of the arch. To start with that, we'll take our strip. And one of the things we may wanna do, and this is optional, but I do recommend doing it, is taking this end cap off. Now I had already done that while doing the horizontal span here. And when I had shortened the strip, I just omitted putting the end cap on because I know I like to take this off. The reason being is we can't slide this end cap fitting through the bottom of the base of the arch. That wouldn't make, in order to do that, we'd have to make the hole really big and the arch would have to be very big. So what we do instead is we take this off. That can be done with a heat gun, just heating this up, being careful, rotating this around that we don't melt the plastic, but just heating it up enough and pulling it off. And then when it's all assembled, we'll reassemble or re heat up and put on this end cap as well as the end cap here to the horizontal span. If you don't want to do that or you don't have a heat gun, you can assemble this by pushing everything through the bottom of the base this way, but it gets cumbersome because rather than working on this span here like we did and had this all complete and then assembled the base, rather than doing that, you're having to do that with it connected loosely to the base on one end. So it's kind of cumbersome but you can do it that way if you choose or don't want to put this connector and take it off. In my case, I do like taking it off, so I'll do that now. I start by taking the gasket off because that can get in the way or go flying. And I'll put a glove on just because it can get a little hot. Now, some manufacturers caps come off easier than others. This one happens to be a little bit more troublesome than others I've worked with, but it still comes off fairly easily. just a little bit more. There it goes, pulls right off. Just set that aside, set the heat gun aside, and we'll unroll the spool. Now here, this is the start of the strip, so the arrows run this way. And what I can do, is take my strip here, or the tubing here, this is the end, and I'm just gonna feed it through. So rather than uncoiling the whole thing, I'll just feed it through as I uncoil it. And just before I get to the end, what I can do here is put this other strip connector on this side. So again, I'll pull this apart. Slide it over the tubing, expand it with my finger, run it to the end, and then take this piece, slide it in, go all the way. You'll note that the end cap, the little silicone end cap, is just on the outside. So we're not putting that silicone end cap in this uh, connector. It's only the main section of the arch of the uh, strip itself. So now I'll push this out the other side. It's starting to come out. I'll push that connector in. Now I'll work on the other side. Pull this out, give myself some room to work. Same thing, take this connector, pull it apart. Slide it over the strip, expand it. And then here, just slide this in. Just gotta get it to go in the little channel.
and then push it in all the way. If you ever have to take one of these apart, if say a strip fails or you're doing something, you can take a small screwdriver, very fine tip, and try and put it in the edge here and just wiggle it apart. It's also designed to be a little longer on this end to give you something to push on. That's the only reason that's a little longer there is give you something to push on to just try and get it open enough so you can get a screwdriver tip in the end. Then you can kind of wedge it out. And once it comes out a quarter of an inch, it's pretty easy to get the rest of it out. So now I want to slide this back through the other way. And we'll just get that connector to go in. And it's the same process as we did on the horizontal span. We'll take our connector, I'll pull it on the bungee and just push it over the end. And then we want to push the strip inside the tubing, put the end cap on. Now we'll go to the other side of the tube and do the same thing. Get my end cap here. I'll just pull very gently just to get rid of the slack and then take my needle nose and I'm, and I'm just trying to grab the little copper piece. It's a little tricky. Try and pull it and feed it onto that cap through the little channel and down. That's in place. Push it all the way in. And then I can just rotate this so that the that little groove is facing straight up. Just make certain that that end is good. And it is. And so that's in. The strip is under tension and ready to go. And that's what's really cool about this design is that the strips are already under tension before you have to even put them in the base. You're not having to mess with that because that can be very hard to try and get things under tension while it's in the base. So it's really nice to be able to do it like this. What I like to do is I'm going to like to move this here just a little bit so it's over the edge of my table. That way I can get this barrel down. I can just position the connector down through the hole in the bottom of the arch. Push the tube into place. Just watch the ceiling. That pushes all the way down. Now I'll come over here, grab the other end. And again, because that's clamped and I'm doing this, none of the stress is getting or very little stress is going on to that base. Push this through the hole, the connector through the hole in the bottom. And then push it all the way down. And I'll kind of put the pigtails just loosely in the gut in the uh, tunnel so they stay out of the way. Now that's all in place and we'll just screw it down. That's all done. Now we'll just lay the arch flat and we'll work on putting the pigtails through the zip tie channel. Now I neglected to mention earlier is we do include zip ties. You only need two for this step. We do include some extras in case they strip out on you, but you'll take your zip ties and we'll run them through the zip tie channel and hold the pigtails in place. You'll want your needle nose pliers and your wire cutters for this. I like to orient the horizontal span here first. So I'll just put that in, lay it flat, and then do the same thing with the arch section. Then you take your zip tie, run it through the hole, and you'll see that it comes out. The zip tie will come right out the bottom here.
So what I like to do is pull this back out, and if you put your fingernail on this, kind of hold it horizontal and feed it, it'll just feed right through the other side like that. Then you can tighten down the zip tie, use the pliers, get a little bit tighter, and trim off the end or beat on the other side. All right, that is done. And the final step in completing these arches is to put the end caps back on here if you had taken them off. So do that. Once again, I'll get my glove on, get the heat gun, and we'll get these caps on. All right, those caps are on and this arch is done. It's ready to go. I hope you found this video useful in showing you how to build your arches using our arch base kits. And if you have any questions, just let us know.